comes to us without a title. He's not senator or congressman or anything like that. And I think he wears that lack of a title as something of a <laughs> with him and talked about him, I, I've kind of stumbled over what, how to refer to him. But it occurred to me that when, when our founding fathers uh, were forming our country and writing a constitution, they had a kind of a problem knowing what we would call our president. Would we refer to him as his highness or royalty in some way? And, and they finally came to the conclusion, you know what, we're going to call him Mr. President. So let me introduce to you Mr. Herman Cain. That's what this nation is all about. But unfortunately, this nation has become a nation of crises. We've got an economic crisis. We've got an entitlement spending crisis. We've got an energy crisis. We've got an illegal immigration crisis. We've got a foggy foreign policy crisis. We've got a moral crisis going on in this nation. And the biggest crisis we have is a deficiency of leadership crisis in Washington, D.C. Ronald Reagan used to describe this nation as that shining city on a hill. But in the last few years, that shining city on the hill has slid down to the side of the hilltop. That's not where America belongs. It is because of all these crises that we're sitting on the side of the hill rather than at the top of the hill. And in order for us to get back to the top of the hill, we have got to solve and deal with these crises that we face. And the only way that we're going to be able to do that is to make some dramatic changes in Washington, D.C., starting with the White House, not ending with the White House. I was a ballistics analyst with the Department of the Navy early in my career. One of the things that I did was I worked on ballistics, ballistic systems for some of our naval weapons and our ballistic missile defense systems. And whenever you're doing a ballistic analysis, you have to figure out what rocket you were going to use. You have to figure out the trajectory. You have to figure out which of our weapon systems was most appropriate for that particular mission. But do you know what the first thing you had to figure out when you were doing a ballistic analysis? Where's the target? <laughs> In business, we call it, what's the problem? In government, it ought to be, what's the right problem that we're working on? And one of the reasons that stuff does not get fixed in Washington, D.C. is because too often they're not working on the right problem, they are not assigning the right priority, so the problems just get worse. They get worse. I happen to believe that no matter which one of these crises we're talking about, including the crises of that airplane taking off right now. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. It must be a liberal that knew I was going to make up. <laughs> and that's not going to stop me. If I can talk a little louder, I'm going to have to. <laughs> Working on the right problem is number one. Assigning the right priority, making sure you surround yourself with good people. That's what the governor has done. Great leaders do that. They surround themselves with good people. That's how you get good plans for fixing stuff. Let's talk about the biggest one that's on the minds of everybody, the economic crisis we face. This economy is on life support. We all know that. We have an administration and a president that spent a trillion dollars to try and stimulate the economy. It didn't work. 
Now, he wants to spend $430 billion or $450 billion to try the same thing again. It won't work. But yet, he continues to try and force through the same philosophy of trying to spin our way to prosperity. You know that doesn't work for your household. You know that doesn't work for your state or your city. But yet he's trying to pass that through. And the unfortunate thing is some people believe it. That Those are the 40% that believe that he's doing a good job. I call them clueless. <laughs> be able to convert the clueless but we can make sure that all of the conservatives, the moderates and the independents who believe in fixing the problems they face that they get to the polls. That's what our challenge is. Let's talk about how we fix this economy. It's on life support. One of the guiding economic principles that you have to understand, you understand it, I understand it, is that the engine of economic growth is the business sector. So you don't continue to lecture and demonize the business sector. You need to put some fuel in the engine of the engine, which is to grow this economy. And so as a result, here's my plan. First, you throw out the current tax code because it's messed up. said, you know, Mr. Kane, that's awfully bold. I know it's bold. We have a big mess on our hands. We need bold solutions. Then we throw that out, and then we pass legislation with my 999 plan. That stands for a 9% business flat tax. A 9% personal income tax and a 9% national sales tax. It replaces the payroll tax, corporate income taxes, personal taxes, the death tax, and capital gains taxes all collected to 999. Every year we spend collectively $430 billion to file and comply. That goes away. Here's the other thing about the 999 plan. No loopholes for anybody. What a novel idea. Then you don't have to keep the baby who gets the loopholes. No loopholes. And it puts small businesses on the same playing, playing field as big businesses. That's what it does. But most importantly, it gets the government out of the business of trying to pick winners and losers and it allows the marketplace, the free market system, to pick winners and losers, which is how it ought to be. There's no such thing as two big competitors. So you're going to be hearing a lot about 999 because I've been talking about it and it's starting to resonate. When I talk about it inside the Beltway with the skeptics, I get a different reaction than what I got with the Beltway. When I'm inside the Beltway and I describe 999, somebody will raise their hand and they'll say, well, Mr. Kane, that all sounds well and good, but you can't do that. I said, why? Well, you can't do that in Washington, D.C. I said, but I'm going to be the president. I can do that. <laughs> Secularstupidist.com, conservative.com, rightosophy.com.